quick show of hands. How many of you, not personally, how many of your airlines or companies are on Facebook? Wow, last year I had blank stairs, like what I'm talking about. So about half the room, uh, stop doing it. How many of you over here, brands, companies, are on Twitter? Again, more than half the room, stop doing it. You know why? You're on the side of majority. In fact, there was a recent forester research survey done, which says that by the end of this year, 99% of all retailers in the US will have a Facebook fan page. Now this is retailers, not airlines, okay? So airlines, hotels, the pizza guy, the shoe shine guy, everyone is gonna have a Facebook fan page. And 91% of all Twitter users will be, well, 91% of all retailers will be on Twitter. Again, you're part of the crowd. And what am I doing when I'm going to on Facebook? I'm going there and poking Serena and I'm checking out my friend's photos from the party. I'm not like going to an airline stage and seeing what new destinations they have to offer. Right? So, what are you doing there? Are you just being part of the crowd just because the next guy next door is doing it? So it all boils down to tying it to business strategy. And today I'm going to focus on loyalty. How do you tie social media to loyalty and help drive that? Uh, so let me just get started. We're going to cover two paradigm shifts in travel that are happening because of social media and three ways that can drive loyalty. So five things that you can talk about during lunch. Um, again, myself, I'm Shashank Nigam. Uh, I'll run this company called Simplify, which is one of the more popular blogs on aviation. If not, right, go check it out. And we can work with a lot of airlines and airports on their brand strategy, specifically uh, looking at social media. Uh, but I'm always on the My favorite, well, my residency status is C2A. Uh, that's where I'm like to perform. And if you're at airports, drop me a line or a tweet. I'd love to meet new people there. Uh, so the two paradigm shifts in travel. The first one is really that the cult is in. What do I mean by that? The cult. This is a word. So let's let's focus a little on this CRM, which is the customer relationship management. It's really now cult relationship management. How does that happen? What's the difference? So let's focus on a few people you're trying to reach. Previously. Uh, if Mike from Air New Zealand wanted to reach out to 75,000 people to send out his new fares, he would need a list of 75,000 names or email addresses or somewhere, somehow, slice and dice the database to find these 75,000 people and then send it out. But guess what? They recently launched Rico. Anyone's not seen Rico here in the room? You don't know what you're missing in life. Go check out on YouTube who's Rico. Okay, so Air New Zealand is the best one. When he launched Rico, I bet he did not have a 500,000 person list, which is the number of YouTube views that Rico got when it was launched. You see the difference? He did not start with a list of 500,000 people who actually saw it. He started probably with a list of 75 influential bloggers, Twitterers, and customers whom he, whom he wants to send this out to, and then they then reach out to their thoughts and reach your final reach. So you target those people with the arrows on their heads, the key influencers, to ultimately have the reach which you wanted, which is the cult. Do you see what I mean? So that's the first trend that I've got for you, that the cult is in. It's no longer just about the customers. What about the second one? It's really the evolving travel life cycle. I'll tell you what I meant to that. And as we've seen uh, uh, throughout the day, the touch point really starts with the booking. You first interact with the airline when you're trying to book. They're really good uh, with their websites. You've seen the new Delta website, that's where you go there and book. Or you can be going to an OTA's website like it's here, making a booking there. Or as it's in this region, you go to a travel agent and make a booking. Airlines are very good at that. If you're marketing your services, you're marketing your national revenue, it's fantastic. In fact, they're even better with the travel part of this. So the moment I go to the airport, I know, okay, start gold, go over to that site, so here's the lounge, uh, priority check-in, fantastic. Airlines are really good at that. In flight, they know what we have chosen, especially this Virgin America, they had a guava sauce, which I chosen, is fantastic. So airlines are really good at those preferences, that's what customer relationship management, right? 
slicing and dicing. And you go on, my bag comes out first if it's been priority tracked, and that's where it ends. They leave me to travel. The airline brand agent tends to end there. But why? Here is a video of the How many of you have heard of this restaurant in the world? And now you know that it's what Hamilton Island is like, right? So let's be really frank here. Imagine your bosses are not here. Imagine you have no time or money constraints and you have a nice holiday coming. How many of you would like to go to Hamilton Island? Come on, what are the risks of sleeping? <laughs> uh, so we, we did see a few hands. What did I just get you doing? I had you dreaming about a destination which others seem to like, which seem to be quite pretty. Where is the airline in this equation? When you are thinking about traveling, when you are, well, when people are sharing about their travel experiences through this video or on Facebook or elsewhere. So the idea really is to zoom out and rethink the traveler life cycle and the brand touch points that are there. And it really become, begins with the dreaming part. Let's just uh, share an example of, you know, George is at a cookout with his wife. And they're talking about an Alaskan cruise. And another couple of the Monica over here. And they start thinking, hey, sounds like interesting, Alaskan cruise, they seem to have a lot of fun. Maybe we should do it. So what do they go back and do? They go back home and they start planning and validating. Again, the green part had no hair in it, or hotel or car rental. Uh, what do they do when they plan and validate? Oh, they'll look some kayak.com or any other sort of site or cheap packages next summer. And his wife is checking out uh, hotel reviews on TripAdvisor and things like that. Again, at this point, no airline booking engine inside or no airline coming knocking at their door. Hey, you want to go to Alaska? Here's a friend who's in this car. I might pick it up. So then the travel part comes in, and then the sharing part comes in. What are we going to share? How many of you have gone on a holiday, the last holiday you went to, and took a Facebook profile shot? It's a common thing to do these days. And guess what? It's not uploaded when you get back home. It's uploaded right there. I was taking a flight recently uh, from Changi, and you know they've got these free computer internet terminals? And I couldn't find them because they were all busy. And there's only one batch of email. Everyone else was Facebook. Like, come on, guys, it gets on well done. <laughs> I want to read through my emails or something. Uh, but that's what people are doing. They're sharing their travel experiences, experiences while they travel. How are airlines enabling that, empowering that? How are they part of the equation? So that's really the second trend uh, I wanted to oh, I'm rewind here. Yeah. I wanted to go on, which was the well the evol uh, evolution of the travel life cycle. But linking it to loyalty, the business goal, right? Does loyalty matter? Well sure it does. Uh, I'll tell you why. This is a uh, chart, stop chart. Of Aeroplan, Air Canada's loyalty program versus Air Canada itself. And as you can see, since 2007, Air Canada is down 20% and Aeroplan is down up 27%. Case by case, loyalty is important, right? So, how do you tie that to business? And why is loyalty important? I mean, as we can all testify, loyal customers are easier to retain, uh, they bring in more value over time. So, how is that? that you drive loyalty. Using, keeping the two things in mind that I just shared, the evolving travel life cycle and the fact that the cult is in. Uh, so again, because the cult is in, we got to help them dream and share. Empower them to dream and share. I'll show you an example. Uh, anyone here part of Scandinavian Airlines Euro Bonus Program? Those guys are here. So they've done a pretty fantastic job. These are screenshots from their uh, loyalty program. And what you see here is the login screen. Once you log in and check out your, uh, you know, your uh, Quick and Fire program account, you get it and you'll see that, well, it's all in Dutch or Norwegian. No, Norwegian. Uh, you'll see that it shows you with a personal greeting that, hey, you've got this many uh, points left. And it has this grid of destinations, which is right there. Guess what? When you hover on it, it will show you how many points you need to get there. And these are destinations which you can already go to. 
So what you'll see is uh, there's a personal hero bonus welcome. Uh, there are nine suggestions which are dynamically generated for you, specifically for your miles and how many miles you have on where you can go. You can mouse over to see how many miles you require to get there. And guess what? In addition, in addition to that, there's an option uh, which is advertising things which are beyond the reach. If you have 20,000 miles, those are your options talking about 15, uh, well, 25,000 miles or 30,000 miles. Here's what you need and where you need to go. Not only that, once you click on the image, you don't see 40 people filming videos and putting it up there. There's nothing designed or scripts written because people don't trust it. Those are reviews from TripAdvisor and other travel sites syndicated for free because they're openly available. They're just reviews about Helsinki. And guess what? If that's an aspirational destination you want to go to, people generally like to travel with someone. So you click on, send it to someone or invite someone, and it goes as a postcard. What did SNS just allow them to do? They first allow them to dream, here's where I can go, and then they allow them to share, right there. And I'm not talking about the 500 million people on Facebook, I'm talking about their very specific 50,000 miles program members who have earned more than 20,000 miles. Now that's your customer you're talking about, right? It's much more likely to share a destination and share with someone who wants to travel with who also probably is a 20,000, 50,000 miles long, as opposed to the 500 million on Facebook. So, you got to help them dream and share. Uh, this is another example. Who has heard of Foursquare? Just a show of hands. Okay, I see some hands. Good. Foursquare is a new mobile based network for the internet, uh, which allows you to literally check in at a location, and it's sort of a combination of uh, you know, some lot of new in and very nice and five times, and I check in six times, then I become the mayor of Marina Bay Sands. Very simple. So I can be the mayor of multiple places, and the key is to remain mayor of multiple places. So you keep checking in. When you check in, something happens. When you check in, it announces to your social networks on Twitter, Facebook, wherever else, that you are here. It shows brand adoption. Now here's Something interesting that uh, intercontinental hotels has done, and airlines, I think, and airports especially can adopt uh, or adapt this a little. Uh, this is a program called Top Guest, topguest.com. Uh, what they do is they link your loyalty program to check ins on Foursquare. So, as you can see, Priority Club uh, is right there. And when a person checks in, whether or not he's staying at the hotel, I can be in the lobby and I check in, I get 50 Priority Club points. What's that helping you? It's helping you earn, earn, activate the customer. You might be not really active, but 50 points. You might be acquiring a new customer for 50 points for, you know, at the other quite a lot. Uh, not really techniques, but others. So this is quite interesting. Just by checking in and announcing to the world that you are at this property, you're earning points. You're being given an, you're given an incentive uh, to do this. Uh, so that's the priority points. Here's another example. Flip.2. F-L-I-P.T-O is a website which allows you, with one line of code, just like to insert ancillary items in your booking path, because that's what, where the conversion is created. Um, you see, it's like the last step of the booking process is the confirmation, right? Just before the confirmation, it inserts a page which allows people to share that, hey, I'm flying Bali Airlines on, uh, to Santiago and it's sharing brand adoption. And for that, there's of course the incentive which Lan has put in, which is earn 500 miles just by sharing. Now, the guy has already paid for the ticket, he has already booked it, he's just waiting for his printed confirmation. He's got nothing to lose but only something to gain. If he isn't a member, he signs up. If he is a member, then he's active. And guess what? This, this URL that you see, it comes on my Facebook or on my Twitter, and I'm the friend. I see it, I can click on it and help him plan the trip, like check out these five spots in some here. For doing that, I get 100 miles. It's kind of interesting. Flip.2. Uh, you should check it out. Here's another example. Who's seen this? Give me a show of hands. Oh my god, who has seen this? Can we have at least a Changi Airport guy stand up and show, raise hands, and wave? This is a slide, not, a sh not at a shopping center, but at Changi Airport, 
When you guys are flying back, please go give it a shot. Chang Airport, yes, Chang Airport has two slides. One is three floors high, one is one floor high, and it's for adults. It's not just for kids, okay? And no one would imagine doing this at the airport, but Changi has done it, and they've got everyone talking about it. Whoever has tried it, whoever has heard about it, aluminium magazines, industry magazines are talking about the design. That's where I first heard it. And Fast Company uh, is talking about it as something very disruptive. People are talking because they don't expect it there. Of course, to sit in there, you either have to spend $20 at Changi Airport and show them the receipts, or you can pay five bucks and go down. Ancillary or something like that. <laughs> Maybe you can link it with airlines and have business staff passengers. But imagine, when I was preparing these, uh, this presentation, I had an idea. What if every time I went into the slide, they gave me a hat, and that hat had a mounted camera on it. And for that five bucks, I get to keep that recording, just in a thumb drive or something. What would I do the moment I get out of it? Put it on YouTube. Why do you think there's so many skydiving videos on YouTube? Because people can share it. What if I can share my adult slide experience after 35 years? Oh, I'm finally in a slide again. Everyone's going to watch it. And people might actually prefer a transit in Hong Kong and in Singapore as opposed to Hong Kong when the flight prices are like $2 different. If they're going from LA to KL, cafe is the same price as a skill. Transit in Singapore, get the slide. Great, isn't it? So, you got to empower and allow them to share. Who has seen these? KLM, baggage tax. So KLM now allows you, whether or not you're flying KLM, customized baggage tax, which are mailed to your address. You can upload your photo, you can upload your kid's photo, you can upload your dog's photo and put names there, and you have luggage tax. And guess what? Every single tag also has a KLM logo, and even if I never fly KLM in my life, I'll be advertising their brand for them. Did they pay me to do it? No. They truly had a value. And they empowered me to share. Do we hear Facebook? No. Do we hear Twitter? No. It's beyond that. It's about driving business goals by allowing people to share. It's simply that. So, again to my point, you go to help them dream and share. It's the dreaming as well as the sharing that happens. Because the cult is in. You got to go beyond the 75,000 emails or slicing and dicing your database. That's good. You're already doing it well, you've got to go beyond that. The second point is go where the cloud hangs out. Let's go to Argentina. Anyone been to Argentina recently? In Buenos Aires, have you heard of this? It's like the latest race in Buenos Aires these days. So this is a cafe called Urban Station. Check out their website, really swanky. Um, Urban Station, it's a new cafe that's just been set up in uh, Buenos Aires. And they were debating whether to have Wi-Fi free, or whether to have Wi-Fi chargeable, or whether to like knock off people uh, after a certain time automatically out of Wi-Fi and get them locked back in. Because they realize that people, when they go to cafes, they want to have Wi-Fi from Starbucks, the Starbucks syndrome. Guess what they did? They turned the concept on its head. They said, you know what? You pay 10 bucks for the Wi-Fi and you'll get free flow coffee. That's great, right? You pay $10 for the Wi-Fi, they'll give you not only coffee, free flow coffee and some snacks, they'll also give you PowerPoints, power plugs, they'll give you a table, and this has been such a rage that if you see at the bottom, they actually have sofa corners. Companies have started having team meetings there. Like the whole team goes there, pays $10 to the person for Wi-Fi, and gets coffee free, uh, free flow, and they just book the whole sofa corner. They have booked like two months in advance these days. You just go on their website and book it. So, they realized that people were using Wi Fi and they adapted to the habits. They did what the cult was doing, as opposed to resisting it. Delta on Facebook, I'm sure a lot of you must have heard of this. This got a lot of press, uh, I think, last month or a couple of months back. Delta now allows booking on Facebook. It seems to be a controversial decision because. There was lots of talk whether people on Facebook are booking, whether they're just sharing, is it even relevant? But guess what? If I'm Delta, I would just be happy that these 37,870 people are not just talking and just creating buzz or creating noise, but maybe some of them are booking. 
Instead of asking them to, hey, you're on Facebook, you really like this destination, now get out of Facebook, come to my website and go through the booking process, then go back to Facebook. They said, hey, you just put it in Facebook, just click and book. Simple, right? Didn't take them too long to handle it. In fact, there are free, free Facebook apps these days. We don't even need a booking engine, you just package your product and put it there. They don't even try to finish it. You save costs from travel agents too. Uh, who's heard of Groupon? I'm sure the guys from the US for that. Groupon is a very, very popular social shopping site these days where every day they give you one discount uh, for something which is at least more than 50% discount. And it's all the rage with women in the US. In the US. Like everyone who ever raised their hand if this was in San Francisco, this conference. Uh, guess what? The other day, this was a game. They realized that uh, their penetration for the club use with women wasn't as high as men. They said, you know, let's let's get them in. So they, they did a group on group on where uh, instead of fifty dollars, you pay twenty two dollars to enter Delta House. So you're a non premium member, generally leisure, generally malls, who like to do what? Talk to other malls. And they, they sold eight hundred and sixty three in one day. Good thing, right? You target a very specific group, uh, a specific target audience which we weren't able to reach earlier, and you get them to come in. Uh, here's another example. Uh, Virgin America, they launched Toronto recently from San Francisco and Los Angeles. And guess what they did? Of, of course, it's going in, right? So Richard Branson, Richard Branson's got to be there. But guess what? It wasn't just the press that was invited. They sent out an email, or rather a tweet. They sent out a tweet saying, if you are one of the most influential Twitterers in Toronto, then we'll invite you to come meet Richard Branson. How do you judge that? There's a tool called Cloud, K L O U T, Cloud.net, which for free allows you to check how influential you are on Twitter. Virgin America just said, check my eligibility here, and if you have a cloud score higher than a certain number, you get there. And what do you think these guys did when they did that? Hey, Richard Branson, click, hey, I'm here, and live tweeting and live blogging doing all that stuff. Not only that, they said, if you are one of the like, top 10 or something, then you get free first round trip on our flight from Toronto. What do you think they're doing? The boys in America have Wi-Fi on board, so they doing it from 35,000 feet. They in fact even introduced a badge on Foursquare called, called the Mile High Badge, if you check in on Foursquare at 35,000 feet. So they really leverage the influences. Very, very small numbers. No one's talking about 500 million on Facebook, but the 500 people uh, that they have targeted. Tripit, who uses Tripit here? Come on, all you have to I see your friends. That's good. Tripit allows you to share your itinerary as well as your destinations, even if you've not done the booking, with the world, with Facebook, LinkedIn, any control. Like my inner circle includes my mom, my brother, my, and they know what time I'm landing on which flight. My outer circle includes Facebook friends, they just know that I'm there. And then there are others who just don't have like or something. But all this data, uh, TripIt basically allows data sharing, travel plans are shared 42 days prior to travel. On average, 42 days. As opposed to, I think, for airline bookings, it's like anywhere from 20 days to 2 days prior to booking. Now, when you know that this guy is traveling on this day, what do you think ancillary services can do? Hey, buy a car. Hey, get some insurance. Even otherwise, if I'm just stating my intention to travel to Germany next summer, if you have a reason to me and say, hey, here's a 20% discount if you travel with four. I mean, I don't get four people, but I will. And I wouldn't go hunt for prices. You lose that price sensitivity that is traditionally going to be there among travelers. So, Tripit, open data, huge potential is there. So, you've got to go where the club hands up and not just ask them to come to you. Things are changing. People always compare prices. I forget the number, like 42 sites before a decision is made. It's crazy. Um, the last one, again, okay, because the cloud is in, you got to change with the cloud. You don't want to end up looking like this guy with this head in the sand. Uh, what, do I, what do I mean? You, you really got to be changing with the cloud. Now, who's used crosswalks or zebra crossing? All of us, right? But who has actually turned at 90 degree angle and then turn and then 90 degree gear and then go back? No one does it. People always walk at in curvature, right? That's a natural human way.
way to do it. So guess what? In South Korea, they have done this. They have adapted to behavior, which is exactly the same. I mean, if today you go ask, uh, privacy is a new feature, right? These days, when airlines or you know, privacy of data, how is this going to be shared? If you go ask a 16-year-old kid, hey, what do you think about privacy? You're going to get, oh, OMG, what DF? And it doesn't matter. You've got to go with the market. And I'm not just saying if there's a 16-year-old market, it's a business crowd, just go get an iPhone app. I don't know why SQ doesn't have an iPhone app today when Malaysia Airlines is doing augmented reality. Right? Very, very basic things. You've got to do what, what the cult is doing. Here's another example. Um, kids don't like vegetables by default, right? Um, so there's this company which packages baby carrots like junk food. So instead of pulling out packets of chips, they pull out packets of carrots and have them. And I loved it. And then it boosts the sales. So you just change the mentality, fit it in their mindset, and go ahead and do it. There were, uh, I was talking to these folks from Virgin Atlantic, their commercial director, and they were talking about embedding multiple flight search in their website. No way. But then one idea we came up to was, let's just still embed it and still have Virgin America at the top and the rest at the bottom. They would probably win trust and there would be transparency. That thing didn't go live, but it can be done. There are ways if you think about it. Now, uh, wizard of coins.com. Now, on average, loyalty programs, uh, generally people own, I have like 16 loyalty programs, I'm a member of 16 airline loyalty programs. Even if I fly them, even Royal Brunei, I flew them once to Brunei and I'm a member. They send me lots of emails. In general, people have more than one program. On average, six. Six is the number. On average, coins.com allows you to Consolidate all of them into one account. Not just that, you can trade points, things like that. And airlines have started adopting this. If you look here, uh, I don't know if you can see, but US Airways is having their dividend miles offer, which is being shared in the points.com forum. As opposed to only the US Airways website or the newsletter. Why? Because their loyal members are here. They are trading miles, they're buying miles, they're trading miles. It's also a source of good as a revenue, but that's where the cup is. That's where they're hanging out, so you've got to be there. Um, here's another video I want to show you. You can have the sound, please. This is I'm in row eight. Please step aside, sir. It's just one row, don't you think it's okay, but... We'll call you row momentarily. Step aside, sir. Well, let's step back five years from now. It's employee review time, okay? And the airlines are reviewing this employee and they have the annual review, tough times. Did she follow the rules? Yes, check. Did she not allow anyone to go around the system? Yes, because the assumption was what if everyone else does it, right? So good employee. Um, did she step out of her way? Did she, was she firm? She was, right? Pretty firm, yes, check. Guess what? All the check boxes, tick, tick, tick. Promotion. Perfect employee. Today, it would be a different game. The guy steps on the boat, on, on the plane. If the plane has Wi Fi, you're screwed. <laughs> That's it. If the plane doesn't have Wi Fi, you're screwed when he lands. It will be on YouTube, it will be on Facebook, and you'll be ranting all about it. Anyone heard of Kevin Smith? If not, go Google it. Kevin Smith is a producer who made a big fuss about Southwest. Uh, but that's the reality. It is safe to assume at least two people per flight are tweeting live. That's that's a good step to go. go to, that's a safe assumption. So what do you do? You got to go uh, and change the account, your practices. You got to be prepared for that reality. So to sum it up, because the cult is in, I want to just have sort of a big picture view. I spoke about the cult today, which is the big the big stuff. And right now, there isn't much overlap with the customer, which you guys are really good at, and you're even better with the loyal customer. If I ask Continental, give me the slicing and dicing of your top 500 flown mile mileage guys in Singapore and Hong Kong and Vietnam. Oh, right there, spew it out. And that's already good at that. But what if I ask you, so which of these is the most influential? Maybe you might have the answer. Oh, let's, let's begin with the other end. Uh, AirAsia has 
or for the uh, so some of the Southwest Airlines has a million fans or two million fans on Twitter or Facebook. <laughs> if I ask them how many of the, how many of these have flown at least three thousand miles in the last one month, I bet they cannot answer that yet. So the need really is to increase that overlap and make sure that the customer, sorry, let me just rewind, that the customer and the cult is sort of overlap and there's much more integration, factor integration with driving business goals like loyalty, and you know that these are the 500 cult members I must know and I must never go on to drive our loyalty program as opposed to just the customers. So it's got to expand, you've got to expand that mission as well. So I won't go back to us later on, uh, that's my email address and info, and we can chat again. Thank you very much.